Hey everybody, Paul Lake here with another Physics Problem Solved. This is the channel where I solve the physics homework problems provided to me by my tutoring clients. Take a look at the video description below for a way to get in contact with me if you need a private physics tutor. And if you find this uh, video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, like, uh, you know, like it, uh, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you're a physics student or a um, physics teacher. And uh, Anyway, uh, today's problems, is, it's an electrostatics problem, and this is a challenging problem, um, and because here's what you're gonna need uh, to know. We're, we're gonna use Coulomb's Law for electric fields, and um, we're also gonna use a little bit of integral calculus. It's not super heavy-duty calculus, but you, you do have to be somewhat familiar with integration in order, for, uh, to, in order to solve this problem. So let's take a look at the problem. We have a rod of uniform linear charge density uh, lambda is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs per meter is bent into an arc of radius 0.1 meters. Okay, The arc is placed with its center at the origin of the axis shown. So here's the center of that arc. Determine the total charge on the rod and determine the magnitude and direction of the electric field at the center O of the arc. So we wanna know what is the electric field right here. Okay, so give this problem a try. Uh, pause the video right now, work it yourself, and, uh, and then restart the video to compare your answer uh, to mine. And um, so anyway, let's get, let's get going here. So here's what's given. I'm just gonna put given by the picture. You should redraw the picture on your paper. Um, and then we know that this, this has a charge density on it. I'll just kind of show some charge like this going around this arc. And we know that that charge density is lambda. We call a, uh, a linear charge density is, is often called lambda. And lambda is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5 Coulombs of charge per meter of length. See, that's a linear charge density. How much charge do you have per unit length? So there you go. Um, and what else do we know? I think I think everything else is, is on the picture here. The radius and now what are we trying to find? Well, for part A, we wanna know what is the total charge? I'll call that capital Q. And then for part B, we want to know the electric field at point O, at the origin. Okay, right there. All right, so let's let's get started here. So the first thing I want to know is how much charge. Now the amount of charge depends on this charge density times this length. So quite often you'll see that the total charge is equal to the charge density times the total length of this arc right here. And um, uh, so we know what lambda is, um, but what is this length right here? Well, notice that it's part of a circle. So if this went all the way around 360 degrees, it would be 2 pi r, right? The circumference of the circle. But we only have a fraction of that. And what fraction is it? Well, notice that this sweeps out 120 degrees out of 360 degrees. So it's 120 degrees out of 360 degrees, which is one third. So it's, this is makes sense, doesn't it? This is one third of the circumference. That's the length that has charge on it. So let's um, let's plug in some values here. Um, lambda is one point five times ten to the negative five coulombs per meter. Then we have 2 pi times the radius, which is 0 0.10 meters. And then we, uh, well, 120 degrees over 360 is one third. So I'll just put one third like that. And we get my answer. Q is equal to, uh, if you plug all that into your calculator, you should get 3.14 
microcombs. Um, yeah, go ahead and plug that in. And if it's in scientific notation, um, you, you'll have a times 10 to the negative 6, right? If you plug all that in your calculator, you'll get 3.14 times 10 to the negative 6. Well, the negative 6 is a micro coulomb. And usually you'll see charge written with this with this uh, prefix right here. So that's A, and that's that's my answer for A. Now B uh, is going to be a little more challenging because uh, now let's take a look. We want to know what is this electric field. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of charge here, maybe this one right here, and I'm going to call this dq, a little tiny bit of all the charge that's on there. Now, if I if I put a little positive test charge right here, this positive charge is going to push this guy this way, isn't it? Away from there. So that's the e, that's like a little tiny de will we'll look like this. And then, but notice that for every little charge on this side over here, I've got an equal amount of charge. It's another little dq. And it's going to push this away. And see the symmetry here? There's another little tiny de. And I think what you can see is that if I break these into components, we have an x component and a y component of the electric field. And then for this one, we have an X component and a Y component. And notice that the Y components cancel each other. These are why well, I didn't draw it particularly well, but this and this are the same, but in opposite direction. And remember that electric field is a vector, so we're adding them as vectors. And so what this is saying is that all the Y components are canceling out. And so I'm, I'm making a symmetry argument here. Okay, now, um, what about the X component? Well, notice that the X components are in the same direction, so they're gonna add. So what that means is that my total electric field is gonna be in this direction. Okay, so how do I figure out what that is? Well, look at this little DE, and I'm gonna say DE, oh, let me uh, back out here. Uh, this little tiny bit of the electric field in the X direction is going to be equal to this. Well, remember, um, it's uh, k times dq over r. Now, this is going to be r squared. So remember, this is the, remember for a, um, an electric field for a point charge, you have, this is kq over r squared in the r hat direction. r hat means away from. Okay, but this is the magnitude of it anyway. Well, look, um, instead of K, well, I mean, we have K, and then instead of Q, we have a little tiny bit of Q. So we're going to call that DQ. And then um, R squared, well, we each R is the same. It's a circular arc, so it's a constant radius. So that's going to be a constant R squared. But I only want to keep the X component of that. And now to keep this x component, it's equal to the total E times the cosine of that angle, right? So that, that's going to be dE cosine theta from here to here. So I have to put a cosine theta in there. Okay, and that's going to give me the x component. And that's what I want, is the x component. But I, I don't want just this diff, little differential amount. I want the total amount. So I'm going to integrate from some initial to some final thing. It's going to be a definite integral initial to some final thing. Now, let's pull out the stuff that's going to be a constant. And that is going to be k over r squared. But now we got a problem. We have this cosine theta, but we have dq. Now we can't integrate this because this variable and this variable have to be the same. So this is the real challenging part. And students, you know, when you're, when you're new to calculus and you're new to using calculus, 
with physics, this can be very confusing. Um, so really pay attention to what I'm about to do. What I'm going to do, what I have to do is get this amount of charge in terms of a tiny change in angle. So what I'm going to do right here on this picture, I'm going to, instead of this DQ, I'm going to put a little, little tiny arc length. Now, um, uh, well, before we get to that, let me, well, you, you, you might remember, I'm going to use S for arc length. S is the arc length. And remember when we um, defined what a radian was, right? The arc length is equal to the radius times the angle in radians. So this has to be in radians. Okay. And um, and so if, I t if, if we have a constant radius, if I take the differential of this, a little tiny arc length is equal to the radius, the radius is a constant, times a little tiny change in angle. Okay, so now, so I'm going to use this. I, I got to get this in terms of, now, what is uh, dq? dq is equal to, the, the, the charge on this little tiny length is equal to the charge density times this little tiny length, D, which I'm calling ds. ds is my little tiny length. Okay, but ds is inscribed by this little tiny angle d theta related with this. So ds is equal to r d theta. So what I can say is this, that dq is equal to lambda times r d theta. But the r in this case, in this problem, the r is just the radius of the circle. So I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to say this little tiny bit of charge is equal to the charge density times the rate times this little tiny arc length. And the little tiny arc length is, is the radius. I'll use, uh, let me fix that. Uh, is capital R, this radius here, times this little tiny angle. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So this is very common to do when you're using integral calculus on, on a practical kind of physics problem. You've got to change stuff. So we're going to put this in here. So this is k over r squared times the integral of cosine theta times lambda r d theta. And we're going to go from some initial to some final. I'll, I'll, I'll worry, worry about the boundaries here in a minute. Okay, now let's pull out the constant stuff. Oh, look, we have an r squared in the bottom and an r here, so that's going to cancel. I have a lambda that's going to come out, and I'm going to get a cosine theta d theta. So, the e in the x direction, that's when I add up all the little differential electric fields in the x direction, that adds up to my total electric field in the x direction. It's going to be equal to k, the electric constant, times lambda over r times the integral of cosine theta d theta, which is very integra integratable, right? And I think you, if you're studying integ integration, like if you're in, if you're in uh, AP Calc uh, B, uh, AB, I think you probably have gotten to this by now, hopefully. Anyway, um, look at the angle that this is varying from. We're going to start from here, and we're going to integrate from here over to here. Now, you can use radians or degrees here. I'm going to use degrees just because that's what was given. We're going to go from negative 60 degrees, okay, and we're going to go right up to positive 60 degrees. That's that's what we're going to uh, vary this, okay? And so this is now going to be equal, let's put in k lambda over r, and then what is the integral of, um, of cosine theta? Well, 
it's sine theta. One thing, the antiderivative of sine theta, when you, if you take the derivative of sine theta, you get cosine theta. So the uh, antiderivative of cosine theta is just sine theta. But we're going to evaluate it from negative 60 degrees to positive 60 degrees. And this is equal to k lambda over r times the sine of 60 degrees minus the sine of negative 60 degrees. Okay, and so now we've got a little bit more. We're almost done. K lambda over R. Time. Now, what is the sine of 60 degrees? Well, if you should know your unit circle. Look it up if you don't remember. But this, the sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. Or I think it's um, also 0.866 if you want to write it as a decimal, and that's, that's okay to do in this case. Um, minus, now what is the sine of negative 60 degrees? Well, that's just going to be in the negative, that's going to be in that fourth quadrant. That gives you a negative um, uh, thing, so that's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, what does this give me? Uh, uh, square root of 3 over 2 minus negative, that's plus, so we just get k lambda over r times the square root of 3. Now, this is all in the x direction. This is all, so I'm going to put an i hat. And if you haven't seen this before, i hat, it's called a unit vector, and all it means, it's a shortcut way of saying in the x direction. So all of this magnitude in the positive x direction. If, it, if I want to make it a negative x direction, I make this negative i hat, you see. Very, very handy. Now we're ready to pl plug in our values. This is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. That's our electric constant. And then lambda is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs per meter, and then we're going to divide this by the radius, which is 0 0.1, oh, wait a minute, did I, no, that's right, um, let me check, yeah, that's right, Point, um, one, zero meters, and then, oh, and then you got to remember to multiply by the square root of 3. Take all of this, multiply by the square root of 3. This is all in the positive x direction. And so plug all that in your calculator. And if you found this video useful and helpful, please give it a like right now. Give me a thumbs up right there. It really helps. Subscribe to the channel for more and share it with your friends. Anyway enough commercial interruption. If you plug this into your calculator, you get 2.34 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. Let's check that. We've got uh, a meter cancels with the meter squared. This meter cancels with the remaining meter. This coulomb cancels with the coulomb squared. And I'm left with newtons per coulomb, which is what we measure electric field in. And this is at last my final answer. Groovy! All right. Anyway, uh, again, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Give it a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you in the next video. And until then, may the net force be with you always. That is all.